Phillies mailbag Tuesday. Frank Close is in the house. He'll join me now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline as the Phillies get ready for uh, game two of this set. They still haven't scored in this series, and uh, we'll see a little bit about why the weak bats this lineup. Should there be changes? Will there be changes? The center field problem and so much more as Frank Close joins us now for a look inside the Phillies mailbag and a lot of Phillies questions coming your way, Frank, uh, with the team that, you know, I think people want to like this team, but they see uh, the frustration that is out there and they got some questions that are starting to form. Um, last night, couldn't get a run, couldn't scratch a run home last night. This uh, offense has been a little bit of an issue. I thought, um, you know, the bullpen held up their end of the bargain, which has been good. But let's get into some of the mailbag questions here. Um, and uh, first, before we get to there, what's going on with some of these COVID situations and what do we know there? Well, we know five coaches are currently out under the protocols. Now, uh, according to the protocols, we don't know if that means there's an infection or if they had contact with somebody with COVID. So it could be either either type. Uh, we're not necessarily privy to that information. Uh, they can say that the coaches indeed um, are under the protocols, but the players, they can't. So you just get put on the injured list with no explanation, and then you see when they come off. So if, if it's not an infection, well, maybe it could be sooner once they, they get a couple negative tests. But uh, you certainly don't want to see this kind of breaking out because over the weekend we learned about Dusty Wathen. We learned about hitting coach Joe Dillon. You learned about uh, assistant pitching coach David Lundquist. And then the fact that it spread to Paco Figueroa, the first base coach, and um, I'll, I'm forgetting a coach off the top of my head. There's a lot of coaches. Yeah. <laughs> so um, just give the big you a thing is, for pause. Is, is Jose Alvarado, I guess, is the one guy. Mm. They had to make a couple call ups yesterday. Uh, but Alvarado is the one guy out of that mix. I think Matt Moore was another one. We'll get to him in a second. Yeah, so you certainly don't want to lose Alvarado, who who is really a uh, strong lefty in the pen. A little wild at times, but uh, certainly replacing him with Christopher Sanchez or or Damon Jones doesn't give you that same level of confidence that you'd have in somebody like Alvarado. But, uh, you know, hopefully he's, he doesn't have an infection. Um, by the way, also, too, you know, the fact that you lost your backup shortstop and Didi Gregorius was a little banged up yesterday, so Nick Maton had to to make a, a little sooner than expected major league debut last night. But uh, so so apparently there's not enough players that are out for this to be considered an outbreak. Uh, which if you reach that status, then you're allowed to use players that aren't on your 40 man roster. But we'll see what happens. I remember opening day the Nationals had 10 players out, so uh, that certainly uh, helped them get to a slower start. You, you don't want to see it get, get much worse than this if you're the Phillies. Yeah, and by the way, John Heyman did report that uh, no players were positive. The three are in the protocols due to close contact, so I guess uh, that's good news there. All right, speaking of Matt Moore, let's get to that because he has not pitched well in really any of his outings. So if Matt Moore, who's out with the COVID protocols right now, continues to struggle, what are some of the options – It looks like Vince Velazquez could start a game, which I despise them (laughs) doing this to this poor guy again, but he looks like he's the next option. But if more struggles, what are some of the options out there? Well, the Phillies say, or Joe Girardi said, that if Matt Moore is not back in time for his next start, that it would be Vince Velazquez, which, by the way, Girardi doing that basically (laughs) gives away that he's on the COVID list because you can't activate him sooner than 10 days otherwise. But um, but looks like Vince Velasquez is going to be the uh, the one that's going to make the start in case, um, which is which is kind of a shame because that kind of hurts your bullpen as well. Uh, the Phillies do have the extra extra arm in the bullpen at least uh, because Jones sort of replaces Alvarado, and then you have Sanchez replacing Velasquez. But it's, it's, it, you know you're you're getting weaker at every every step of the way, and if certainly if Vince Velasquez gives you a uh, Vince Velasquez type start, the four and two thirds Vinny Velasquez special. Um, it's been better than what they've got from Matt Moore. Uh, but you know, I think I think when you're looking at Matt Moore, you know they they paid him four million dollars, so he's going to hang around a while. That they paid Vince Velasquez four million dollars, so he's got to hang around a while. So I, I know, provided that he gets back soon, uh, you know, you're going to see Moore make some more starts, and and Moore is going to he's going to face not the Braves, not the Mets not the Cardinals soon enough. You know, all three of them are good offenses. And, you know, the back-end starters, you expect to have some games like that. you got to hope that his veteran pedigree is going to help him sort of even things out. But uh, it, my opinion, and I really kind of want to go back and look a little bit more closely, you know, he seems to start out okay and then falls off a cliff very quickly. 
So um, is this a situation where he doesn't have the stamina build up yet? Is 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 this is this a reason to consider Matt Moore for the bullpen, knowing that he gets the earlier outs? But um, certainly the the second times around the the uh, starting lineup, they seem to be hitting him. Um, Cole Hamill's not out there. Would he be a guy the Phillies would have any interest? In, is out there, I should say. Is he a guy the Phillies would have any interest in? That was part of the question. Yeah, I I, I just don't see it. You know, the, the, he's the nostalgic pick, but. If you're about nostalgia and you sign this guy and he comes in and gives you three clunkers and gets gets cut, that's not going to do much for his nostalgia, right? It might, in fact, ruin his legacy. So there's many of guys, there are many guys out there. Um, Anibal Sanchez apparently is getting interest from some teams. I don't know if the Phillies are one of them, but but there's plenty of guys out there that that pitched a lot in the major leagues that that could be signed and uh, will be signed by other teams. Um, but I don't know if you need to go there yet, or it, or it'll necessarily be an improvement over Matt Moore. You you got to give him a few more starts to really see what you have. All right. Uh, at this rate, Dave says we'll set the record for most runners left on base. But I guess I think they left eight runners on base again last night. They're averaging, uh, you know, about that. I feel like per game, they're twelfth in that category. They leave six point eight eight runners on base. But um, I guess the further question off this is the ro- the the lineup configuration. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think one reason for it, and, and uh, I was digging into the numbers, the, the all-time record is the 1941 St. Louis Browns who left uh, 1,334 and 154 game season. That was 866 uh, for the whole year. So, uh, But right now, the, you know, the Phillies are behind the Los Angeles Dodgers. So they're, they're, they're probably leading the way just because they have so many runners on all the time at uh, 8.24 a game, and the Arizona Diamondbacks are at 8. Um, you know, it, really, this is just the last few games that's driving that number up. You know, they, they're averaging 10.33 the last three games. Uh, and so um, with 11 left last night, that's that, that's a lot. And, uh, I, you know, one of the reasons is that, you know, we're seeing we're, we are seeing, as you said, these holes in the lineup. You know, um, Gene Segura is batting 345, which is really good. He's on base a lot. But guess what? Behind him is the center fielder. Behind him is the pitcher. And behind him is is Andrew McCutcheon, who is off to a pretty slow start, batting just 157. So these guys aren't going to be driven. The guys that are getting on base aren't really being driven in right now, and 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 we're seeing that they're getting out on strikeouts too, which is you some you put the ball in play, you anything can happen, right? You saw that in that that fourth game in the Mets series, right? The uh, Guillerme error at third it really kind of sets up the Phillies win. So if you're getting your bat on the ball, things can happen to your advantage. Uh, but but the, you're not going to move any runners if you're striking out. So uh, the number of strikeouts is indeed a little bit concerning. And um, you know, for me personally, I might I might want to see uh, if Andrew McCutcheon gets a day off, get Gene Segura up into that leadoff spot just to just to try to get something going. Yeah, on my DraftKings sports app, I have uh, taken the pitcher against the Phillies to go over the number of strikeouts almost every game for the last week and have hit every single one. And normally, the pitcher yeah. is about four and a half. And he's getting five. The starting pitcher is striking out five Phillies almost every single game. They average, um, you know, the strikeouts, as you noted in your mailbag story, I guess, uh, from John Clark. They're averaging almost 10 strikeouts (laughs) per game. It's an embarrassment. Um, All right. Center field is the story. They, uh, Girardi brought it up last night, or he was asked about it, and he said, they are not happy. We've already burned through three. And the sound of it was, we might have to start looking for a fourth. So, center field, and it doesn't help that Scott Kingery is really struggling at the alternate site. Yeah, in fact, it's really funny. The alternate site, they're not really publishing stats like you would. You know, they, they are playing other teams. So, the Phillies' alternate site is playing the Yankees frequently enough because they're, they're, up, they're up the road from each other. So, uh, but but the Allentown Morning Call and, and Matt Breen dug this up, uh, set, reported over the weekend that Kingery was one for 26 with 12 strikeouts. So it, going into the season, you, <laughs> this will lead us to Odubel Herrera, who I thought had no shot. So for, for Odubel Herrera to get a chance, you would need Adam Hastley to fail. You would need Roman Quinn to fail. You would need Mickey Moniak to fail and Scott Kingery to fail. And, and what do you know? Here we are. Uh, but certainly the... the it's just mind-boggling. The last time a starting center fielder got a hit was April fourth. Jeez, and, and that was Adam Hastley, who was hitting two twenty-two. I mean, you would love to have your center field position hitting two twenty-two at this point. And and really, going into the season, I thought, man, if if okay, if the number eight hole hitter hits two twenty-five, you might be able to live with it. But but they're literally hitting nothing. So uh, I, I here's the here's the problem. 
you brought Mickey Moniak up. You said he's going to play. He's got eight strikeouts and 12 at bats and two walks. Uh, you got to think he's not going to keep that pace. And if you really brought him up to play, do I? You got, you got to let him go for. Do a I have bit, to right? think that though, Frank? He stinks. Moniak I, stinks. I mean, they can't see that. I don't understand how they can't see that he's overmatched. He stinks. Yeah, he. So far, he looks that way. But I mean, if you brought him up to play, what you're you're going to bench him after four starts? You know, you got to you got to give him a little bit more time. Uh, which is which is unfortunate to say. Now, now, as for Roman Quinn, uh, I, I think you've seen enough. You know, this this he might profile as somebody who's the, the ninth inning pitch runner. Um, the, the sad part about Quinn is that you know, notice even last night the Phillies went to Andrew Knapp as a pinch hitter. Uh, you know, their backup catcher batting in the ninth inning is is something that 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 was a sign that they were flawed a couple of years ago. Well, guess what? He's doing it again. So that they they got they got to do something. But the you know the the problem is nobody's making a trade right now. You know, there's the teams that are the quote unquote bad teams are kind of hanging in it. If you look at the numbers. So, so where do you get somebody? I mean, you know, teams have, have, there might be some nice guys that are in AAA somewhere that you might be able you know, in the past, you might be able to get, but everybody's worried about COVID outbreaks. They don't right. want to subtract from their alternate site right now. So, I mean, all this, if it, if it doesn't go, go, uh, go well over the next few days, uh, Matt Breen of the inquiry reported, they actually are considering, Ojubal Herrera, which is which is something which was just unimaginable when the season began. Because again, four players would have to fail for him to come up. And what do you know? Here we are. Yeah, and and I don't think. Um, look, I know that you have been pretty steadfast on that it's not going to happen. But at what point do you say this was a guy who made an All Star team, hit the ball over the fence four times in a short amount of uh, spring training games? He at least gives us some credibility in that eight hole spot, which right now we have none. Well, you know, the thing is, you know, even Joe Girardi, you know, he did an interview with MLB network radio yesterday yeah. and he, he referred to uh, Herrera as being very inconsistent down there. So, you know, his two twenty two in the spring, which of course is not wonderful. Uh, that was basically if you have three hits, do nothing for a week and then have three hits, yep. you know? So like, is that going to help you anymore? If you have six days in a row where he doesn't get a hit, right. but he does go four for four some other night, you know? So if, if he, that, and that was against double a pitching at, at spring training, you know? Right. So I don't know that that necessarily inspires. Any oh, I'm not saying they have great from, options out there. there. There's no question right. about that. Um, I, and right. I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you what, I think at this point, it, it, <laughs> I hate to say this because it's, it's far from ideal, but you're almost at the point where you have to say, uh, hey, Bryce, can you run out to center for us today? Uh, we'll put Matt Moore in right. Matt Joyce. And then you just try to get a defensive replacement late in the game if you've got a couple of run lead. Like, I mean, really, you're getting you're getting to that point. that you got, you got to do something. Yeah, uh, Matt Joyce would play right, you're saying, and then Harper would play center field, and you go that way. Um, you know, you say something about McCutcheon, too, but he's really struggling at the point, too. Yeah. They don't have another leadoff option either. We got like 20 seconds on that, but is there any other leadoff option? Gene Segura is batting 345. Put him in the in the one hole. Right, there you go. Seeing a lot of that, too. All right. Frank's mailbag. Good questions this week. I'm sure uh, Gabe Kapler's in town. We never even got to that. I would love to hear <laughs> more on that. Uh, all right. Sports Pass Live, 97.3 ESPN. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Mike. And he, like all guests, appeared to be the Boardwalk Honda Hotline.